Hey guys, today's little experiment, I want to compare an MP3 versus a non-compressed file. Well, as you know that MP3 is a lossy type compression. It was designed to make a smaller file in lieu of audio quality. You know, they're quicker to download. You can store many songs on your MP3 player in MP3 format because the files are so much smaller than an uncompressed format. Well, in this case, I'm using, you know, same as a CD, 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate and a 16-bit rate uh, stored in a WAV file. And this is not going to be a listening test. It's an actual mathematical differentiation of the two files. I'm going to actually take the two files and subtract the contents and what's remaining is the difference. Now if the files were exactly the same you would get nothing. Same as you know you take the same quantity from one another you end up with nothing. 5 minus 5 is 0, 3 minus 3 is 0. And if they're not the same, you know 5 minus 4 is 1, you get something left over. So that's what I'm going to do here. Here's a spectrogram of the uncompressed file. Spectrogram is a time versus frequency and intensity is shown by color. So the higher intensity is shown by warmer colors and it, as intensity becomes less it gets cooler in color temperature here. And as you can see these horizontal lines, those are harmonics or overtones from an instrument that's playing. You can see in this format here it goes above 20 kilohertz, though it is kind of weak. It gets lost in the noise floor, but it is there. This is a 128 kilobits per second MP3, and you can see right around 16 kilohertz, they lop off everything. Noise, everything's gone. But you also notice that there's holes punched in the sound in the audible range down here. Over here you don't have that. So physicists use psychoacoustic analysis to determine what can be removed from the file to make it smaller. And of course they lopped all this off and they took away some parts in the audible range even. And they figure that the louder parts of the music would mask those and you wouldn't notice them. Of course at 128 you, know, you are trading off sound quality for file size and you actually do hear some of that in some types of music. Now as you increase the bit rate you don't see these holes as much and it actually starts putting in some of the content it thinks it should be should be there above 16 kilohertz. Okay, I'm using Audacity here. This is the uncompressed file. Let me show you how I do the null test. First of all, you might be familiar with that. But to null test it, let me duplicate that. And I will zoom in on a small section here. Let me zoom in tighter still. Look at the waveforms. They're exactly the same. So at any point in time, if I subtract one from the other, it comes out completely zero. Now I can't directly subtract in Audacity, at least that I'm familiar with, but I can invert one of these waveforms and add them together. And that's a, mathematically, that's exactly the same as subtraction. And now it looks like I've taken a mirror and placed it horizontally on the screen and you see the exact mirror image of it. So now what was negative is positive and what was positive is negative mirror image. So now if I play the file don't hear anything, do you? 
they completely null out. Now if I adjust the volume on one of these files, because you know, they're not the same anymore, you'll hear the, the file playing through again. So let me adjust the volume while it's playing. So as I moved it negative and positive, it, you could start hearing it again because, like I said, they don't completely null out due to the differences in amplitude. Now, if I take this file and replace it with the MP3, I can run this null test and see what the differences are. When I actually did this, I ran into some problems because they weren't time aligned. I had to zoom in so tight on the sampling points and time align it with the other file because for some reason it, the MP3 shifted it a few milliseconds. So once I got it exactly time aligned like these two are, I performed the null test and had some interesting results. Okay, first off, I will actually pipe the audio into this video so you can hear the wave versus 128 kilobits per second. Listen to it and see what it sounds like. Not too good, eh? You can hear the cymbals and the percussion splatter into some sort of noise in that wishy type mp3 compression sound. Pretty nasty. Now you might say, well when I play the actual mp3 file it doesn't sound that bad. Remember that this is the difference and you know the difference is several decibels below the sameness or likeness of the files. But when you're playing you know softer type music you can hear that and 128 doesn't cut it for me. So let's see what a 192 rate sounds like. Much better. You can still hear that splattery noise sound from the percussion and you can hear the the vocals and guitars still so there is differences but it is several decibels down from the 128 so it should sound much better but I want to go all the way up to 320 and see what that sounds like well if you didn't quite pick that out you might have to replay and turn up your volume but it does show that the higher quality setting or you know the higher bit rate in MP3 is pretty close. However, you can hear a difference. There is a difference in the files. So there is some loss of the music. It's so far down, you know, it's, it's almost in the noise floor. I don't really know if you're going to be able to pick that out if you performed a blind listening test. So, you know, I won't say either way if it's better or not. I say it's good enough. But again, there is a lossy, you know, a loss to the, the file there. So there is a bit of difference. Well, that concludes this test. I thought it was pretty interesting. I don't know about you, but just wanted to see what the difference between the uncompressed and the mp3 was. Thanks for watching.